Welcome back everybody, Clint here today, and we've got Matt back. What's up everyone? We're with Classic Firearms, and today we're here to discuss everybody's favorite communist cartridge, 7.62x39, but My more than, oh, yeah, well, that's right. Well, I think, it, I, honestly, let's think about it. This thing, billions, billions of rounds yeah, produced. absolutely. And it is absolutely fun to shoot, incredible cartridge, but how does it compare to something like this spicy little guy, 6.5 Grindel? Yep. I think this is a, Fantastic cartridge from my limited experience with it, but from my understanding, you actually have a gun chambered in this? Well, so I, I built an upper for it, yeah. uh, for my AR-15, and it is probably, in my experience so far, my favorite caliber for an AR-15, uh, compared to the other calibers that I shoot, like yeah. 223 or or 762x39. I love the 762x39, I love yeah. my commie guns. Yeah. <laughs> but for the AAR platform, yeah. 6.5 Grendel is my favorite caliber. So. He loves his commie guns so much that he can't accept the AR-15 being chambered in 5.56. He has to go with something like this right here. But I will say this, this thing, it's cool. It's it's fun. And in comparison to 7.62 by 39, I mean, looks, there you go. You can have it, there it is. And when I first saw this, I kind of thought it was more like a uh, baby 6.5 Creedmoor, mm -hmm. right? But if you're, so looking at an AR-15 versus an AR-10, if you have an AR-10 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, you've got larger opponent, larger mass, right? You got more mass, larger components, things like that. But you're pretty much getting very similar types of effects from the 6.5 Grindel mm -hmm. in an AR-15, which are again, smaller housing than an AR-10, things like that. Well, when, when you're talking about like comparing 6.5 Creedmoor to 308 yeah. versus 6.5 Grindel to 5.56. Yeah. You know, there there are some similarities there. So, you know, one thing that makes 6.5 cream more so effective in the 10 millimeter, I mean, sorry, the AR-10, yeah. is that it has, you know, uh, good ballistic coefficient and things like yeah. that. Uh, in this case, you know, you have a lot of extra powder behind that round. And so you're getting a larger bullet going faster. And it, it's a really great performer. It's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Also, like the fact that it doesn't really recoil any heavier than a 5.56. I mean, maybe yeah. just barely noticeably. And compared but, to the 760 by 39, what do you think? Yeah, but certainly less than 760 by 39. Really? Like, I okay. mean, you know, you will notice the difference, like obviously between a 5.56 and a 7.62. This, you're kind of like, did I feel it? Like, yeah, right. You know, like, yeah, it's there, but did, is it really there? Yeah, cool. So you know what? I say we take a quick little break ahead of the range. Yeah. Shoot both of these and we're gonna come back and talk about it some more. So let's see how they feel shooting wise. <laughs> so first off, the break on the little Vishka pistol here, it's mean. And it shoots really well, that's awesome, right? Yeah. That feels really good. Now something I've always noticed about 762 by 39 AK pistols, they don't shoot bad at all. The recoil isn't hard to manage or anything like that. They're actually a lot of fun. There we go, 10 rounds to this guy here. 762 by 39 I never thought was a difficult round to shoot, personally. I've always loved the 762 by 39 cartridge, but I am curious to see how it compares to the 65 Grendel and actually putting rounds down range with it because, uh, well, to me it looks like a little baby 65 Creedmoor. And if it packs kind of the similar punch that the 65 Creedmoor does, then I think this would be a very interesting cartridge in such a small platform. Let's try it. It actually feels really similar. So even though they're completely different operating systems, as this is being an AR pistol, direct impingement, you still have the AK pistol, which is still a long stroke system. It feels really similar, the recoil impulse. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. So they feel the same. Now let's talk a little bit more about the ballistics and whatnot, back with Matt. So, much to maybe your surprise, when I shot both these platforms, and this might have to do with simply the platforms themselves, mm -hmm. these felt like they almost had the identical type of recoil. Wasn't bad at all here, that might have to do something with this yeah, beefy say, break, yeah. and this having no muzzle device, mm -hmm. so therefore maybe the felt recoil on these is that similar because of that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, now, as far as, yeah, let me just show you guys that break on there, which you guys saw at the range, Probably it was very bright. 
fireballs for days. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that tiny short barrel. Oh yeah. Yeah, especially. So, but it felt really good. Now, coming out of similar barrel lengths though, what do you think would be more effective out of a shorter barrel when it comes to these two? All right. So, I mean, I, I think this, uh, when you talk about performance, yeah, 6.5 has a lot going for it because, you know, when you look at commercially available 760 by 39, mm -hmm. you're pretty consistent. There's not a lot of variation. You're usually looking yeah. at like 122 to 124 grain. Yeah. You don't see things really high or really low. Mm -hmm. I mean, occasionally you'll see something that's kind of different, but mostly it's all in that range. Versus in 6.5 Grendel, you have a bigger variety of commercially available yeah. weights. You can go from 90 grain all the way up to like 130 grain. And when you think about the weights that you're talking about right now, backed behind a similar case or cartridge, you gotta think all of the powder that's in here is in here and it's pushing out a much smaller projectile. That's right. So you With got a think, higher ballistic coefficient. It's yeah. got a it's got a thin but long projectile. Yeah. So it's you know it's does things like it, it bucks wind and loses energy less quickly yeah. uh, than that big fat 7.62. Right, it has a little bit more mass and can get a, lose lose that energy a little That's bit right. quicker, which is pretty cool when you think about it. So overall, if we were to have these guys in two souped up firearms, you know what I mean? I mean, let's say we had Ryan's you know Meridian Defense Volk here for this guy, and maybe actually simply just had a muzzle device on here. Uh, we would have probably some pretty interesting, I think some interesting numbers to run, but Anyway, 6.5 Grindel, I have found to be a whole lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at similar weights of, of rounds, you know, when you, the actual projectiles are about the same weight, so like this is commonly available in like 120 grain yeah. versus say 122. I mean, you're looking at something that is going, you know, much faster and yeah. it's got like 200 feet of extra, I'm sorry, 200 foot pounds of yeah. extra energy. Which is pretty awesome. Cause so, so when looking at it, I think this guy's coming in right, right around 2,300 feet per second yep. versus something like on average about 2,600 feet That's per right. second. So you do have something moving several hundred feet per second more. And then on top of that, even 100, 100 foot pounds more energy. Yep. That's that's impressive coming from that little guy there. So 6.5 Grindel, like I said, was a cartridge that I wasn't all that familiar with. I was happy to take it out to the range and shoot it and get some hands on with it. Uh, but of course, you know, that wasn't at great distance. That was all of like, you know, 15 yards. But. So in some ways I feel it's a little bit of an unfair comparison because okay, 762 by 39, like been around since the late forties. Oh yeah. This came out in 2010. Yeah, actually I think it's, I think it's older than that a little bit. I think it came out in the early 2000s, I think. Okay. So, I, might, I might be incorrect, let, let me know down to the comments. But like, you know, Bill Alexander, Alexander Arms, they, yes. they designed this and it was it was designed off of some kind of, we say it comes from this case, but yeah. this case led to like the 6.5 PPC and mm -hmm. led to the 220 Russian and that led to this, but still, you know, it's, it's part of the same family tree. But you know, I mean, he was designing it for yeah. a high performance AR-15 round. So you would hope that 60 years is right. <laughs> and a dedicated firearms engineer with our technology would produce a better performing yeah. cartridge. And I think that's the case. Yeah. That's not to say that, that there's is, anything wrong with this. Right, yeah. I, I knew you would come in defense of the 760 by 39. So. Slow and fat <laughs> is the way to go, people. I'm just saying. <laughs> Fair enough, won't argue that point. But okay, so cool. So my next question that I want to uh, present to you though is, so you say 60 years difference, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think the technology that we gained from the 6.5 Creedmoor after 60 years, do you think it's actually been worth it? Do you think that this guy, you would think 60 years of technology, this is all we got? So there's always a balancing act with fire yeah. and design. And I think that's something that some people lose is that you know, you can always get more power yeah. by increasing recoil and making a bigger, heavier firearm. So when you are dealing with the constraints of, hey, this is the receiver I have, this mm -hmm. is what I'm designing for. Well, I can't make it but so big. Right. Or if I make it like a 50, you know, Beowulf. Yeah, right. Also by Alexander. Alexander Arms, yeah, yeah, right. But then, you know, you lose capacity because you have to mm -hmm. single stack them stuff. So when you're trying to go, okay, we're balancing capacity, yep. energy, accuracy, all that stuff, and you're like, hey, so instead of a 30 round magazine 5.56, you got a 26 round magazine of 6.5. And instead of, you know, being able to, you know, take this and say it's, uh, you know, 123 grains, you're like, okay, well, I'll go to 120 grains, but I'm gonna kick it up yeah. 300 feet per second 
and 200 yeah. foot-pounds of energy. All right, that's that's a yeah. good argument. Okay, all right, I, I see that. That's actually, so when you present everything that they had to work around to get to this cartridge, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I think it is a fantastic cartridge. You know, a lot yeah. of times we hear about new cartridges coming and then they have no staying power because yeah. When you think about like, all right, so nine millimeters have been around since the early 1900s. Oh yeah, wait, yeah. And when they design a new cartridge, when you deal with the plus, okay, so it's it's more powerful than nine millimeter, but there's less capacity or, yeah. or whatever. Like people go, well, but how is it overall better yeah. than nine millimeter? I know nine millimeter, I can depend on nine millimeter. How's yeah. it overall? Well, I think that when you compare this to other common AR-15 calibers like 5.56 mm. or even 7.62 by 39, you're like, well, but there are some distinct advantages and the downsides really aren't that big. Like I said, yeah. 30 rounds versus 26, you're not really losing that much capacity in the same size mag. And this thing's, I really think it's an awesome performer. Yeah, I do too. I do too. So very cool. That's why we brought you in here because you offer the type of insight that I simply am just blind to see, you know, <laughs> but hey, so it's the man who lives at the range. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I don't get out there with, you know, all sorts of calculators and everything. And I know you just sit at home and just do gun research all day. I know that's <laughs> all you do No, but honestly, this is why we like to have you here because you do have good knowledge in all this. And the six, five Grindel cartridge, I think is. It is fantastic. It, after shooting these two, and again, the Alexander not having a muzzle device on it, and I even said this at the range, the 762 by 39 cartridge isn't one to balk at when it comes to recoil. It's easy. It's not a bad shoot. Is it more than 5.56? Sure. Yeah. But depending on how you gas your gun, it might be even worse. <laughs> so I don't think it's that bad at all. But then again, yes, I have seriously probably tens of thousands of rounds under my belt at this point in time throughout my life, and I've shot a little, okay? So to a new shooter, yeah, maybe 7.62 by 39 might be a little substantial. I get that. But if you are somewhat seasoned, you're comfortable with the platform that you're running that might be chambered in 7.62 or even 5.56, you pick up this gun, it's gonna feel fine. Might be a little bit heavier, but that helps reduce the recoil as well. So anyway, 6.5 Grindel, I would recommend it. I would say for all of you guys that are out there wanting to try maybe a different step away from the mainstream calibers that are out there, step away from the 5.56, the 308, the 65 Creedmoor is not as mainstream, but it's well, getting But that's there. also a different platform. It is a completely different, different platform. But if we were talking about 556, 760 by 39, 545, which that would maybe be a good comparison between the two, maybe. So I, I, I think that this is one of the great tools in your toolbox when you talk about the fact that the AR can be the rifle you want it to be. Right. You want a long range rifle, then this would be a great caliber. You know, yeah. the only other alternative I can think of would be maybe like 224 Valkyrie. Yeah. But you know, this has great long distance power. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to, you know, if you wanted a varmint gun or, you know, maybe a larger prey, you know, yeah. hunting rifle. Like, so you can set up your AR how you want. And this is one really valuable tool. Mm. And it's a great kind of all round cartridge as opposed to like, you know, people sometimes can't legally yeah. go hunting with 223. Um, yeah, that's true. You know, so uh, it's a great kind of all rounder, but it's just one more thing that you can use to set up your rifle how you want to. Fair enough. All right, so cool. So we'll leave it out there. If you guys have any experience with 6.5 Grendel you'd like to share, drop it down in the comments. And don't forget, go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already because, well, I'll mention it so many times. YouTube hates guns. And anytime you can do anything to slap the Second Amendment in their face, go ahead and do it. And that helps. Well, one of the ways to help is by liking and subscribing. And that's not just our videos and our channel. That's, of course, all the other gun tubers that are out there. So make sure you're following them all and liking their videos because, again, slap YouTube in the face with the Second Amendment. Speaking of likes and whatnot, 20,000 likes on our DS Arms SA58 Modern FAL giveaway video, and we'll bring back another Barrett. Quick, fast, and in a hurry, all right? So don't miss out on that. And while we're talking about it and 308 and all that goodness, take a moment, take it all in, and look at the beauty that is before you. The DS Arms SA58 is sweet. Chambered in 762 NATO, we've got the bro optic. Not like, not like, you know, college bros. Bro. No, battle rifle optic, four power optic, which is sweet. Picatinny running all the way up top. M-lock rail that we threw on the on here as well. Little BCM backwards vertical grip because I like it. And also the saw grip, which I'm a huge fan of. If you're looking for more information about this guy, head on over to, again, classicfirearms.com or go watch our video announcing this as our giveaway. 20,000 likes, go hit the like button. Don't miss out. Also, 
many ways to get entries right. for this QA. I know your favorite ways to refer friends or family, if you could enter. <laughs> if I could win. Yeah. But I mean, just think about it. So you, know, you have a family member who's willing to do you like a two second solid, just yeah, send them the link, they mm -hmm. sign up, you get the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to entries. It's like 900 entries right there. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, on the other hand, if you want to feel lazy, you can like literally just click through some of our YouTube videos or yep. scroll through a product page. Tons of ways to enter, takes no effort. And you may win this, guy. this totally free. The other way to win is by using a code word, which I'll go ahead and let you guys know right now. It's more of a code designation. It's a SA58. S is in Sierra, A is in Alpha, 58. Your Pretty imagination cool. never ceases to amaze me. I think, you know, I try to keep it really simple for some of our viewers. That's all I'm saying. Mm. All right. Fellow Marines? <laughs> oh, yeah, fellow crayon eaters out there. I hate that joke. All right, I'm leaving it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.